Well, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, my guests today are all identical siblings, but that's only part of their amazing story. Just a few weeks ago, my first guest gave her twin sister an unusual gift. And as a matter of fact, it's the first time this gift has ever been given in the history of mankind. Take a look. Twin sisters Stephanie and Melanie grew up as best friends who always looked out for each other. But as the girls grew older, one of the twins would go through a devastating change. When they reached the age of 13, Melanie was developing normally, but Stephanie began going through the stages of menopause. By the age of 14, Stephanie had become completely infertile, unable to ever become naturally pregnant. As the years passed, Melanie, who had three children, stood by her sister, even donating her eggs, hoping Stephanie could become pregnant, but nothing worked. But hope was on its way. After doing research, the girls contacted Dr. Sherman Sober. Dr. Sober agreed to perform the first ever ovarian transplant between identical twin sisters. The procedure itself was, uh, to put it simply, was a matter of taking one ovary out of Melanie and successfully replacing it into Stephanie so that Stephanie will have a functioning ovary. And we did it on both sides. So Stephanie now will have two ovaries instead of one. It was the first of its kind in several ways. Uh, a case like this is so rare. Plus, you're wondering, when is this going to start working? When will she be able to conceive and, you know, get pregnant naturally? It's more likely to be between six and ten months. Please welcome Melanie and Stephanie to the show. <laughs> Stephanie, when did you first find out that you were not capable of having children? When I was 11 years old. Um, I'd stopped having periods for about six months. Wait, and you were 11 years old. When did you start having your period? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, <laughs> was what, I was four? 13. <laughs> I started when I was 11. Okay. And, um, and I told my mother about it, and she took me to Florence and then from, from my hometown, and uh, they sent me to a specialist about mm -hmm. two hours away. And they then determined what? That I had went through menopause. And unusual for a young lady to do so at such an early age. Yes, sir. Technology-wise, some way, shape, or form, you were going to have a baby. Yes, sir. So you tried twice in vitro. We went through in vitro, and it didn't work, and we had three embryos that were still frozen. And we thawed three of those. One survived the, the thaw, and we implanted it, and it didn't work. Who found out about this other procedure? She researched a lot on the computer and actually found... Dr. Silber, who was going to do it, he had done a transplant before uh, for boys. Was, and for twins. Mm -hmm, for twins. So boys. this is a very strange procedure, but for twin boys, he had done a testicular transplant. He took the testicle from one male, one, one twin, gave it to the other twin, and that twin then successfully had what? Four children. Four, four kids. One had had four kids. So now the theory is, and you got to think about it, because they're identical twins, they have identical eggs. They have identical mm -hmm. DNA. So therefore, any transplant won't require any drugs because they're the same person. It wouldn't reject. It wouldn't reject. So right. it wouldn't reject. So the idea was, well, what if we take one of your ovaries and transplant it into you? Mm -hmm. right? Well, they took the ovary, they mm -hmm. dissected it, got the tissue out of the inside of it, which is where all the eggs are, mm -hmm. and put it actually um, on both sides of her ovaries and then they still froze some to do study research on it. So then is it now you have this this material and this was just done what? How many months ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yes sir. And three to nine months from now you should start probably getting your period back. Yes sir. And then as soon as you get your period back then you'll know that you can probably get pregnant. Yes sir. What happens if this procedure doesn't work? We'll adopt. Yeah we you know we pray about everything that we do and if this doesn't work you know then there's a child waiting for us. Well, there you go. Tell me. It's one of you to look at it. I, was, I hope it works because I think what you need to understand is that this is groundbreaking technology right now. And what this has done, this is not only going to help the two of them, but this may help a lot of infertile women all over the planet. So thank you guys. You're doing some things that are major breakthroughs.